Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric, back again with another video for you guys. And I wanted to discuss the newest software update that I got, which is 2019.20.4.2. So this is the newest software update. If you haven't done so, check out my software update video. You guys will be real excited. You get beach buggy in this update. I also think there's some improvements with the autopilot system that you guys might not have noticed. So I wanna go over those in that video. So take a look at that right line there. You can see that it bounces out, but the car doesn't bounce out with that blue line. It stayed straight there. If you guys are new to Tesla or new to my channel, definitely hit that subscribe button, but also, I wanted to mention whenever you see the blue steering wheel like you see on the center display or the two blue lines, that lets you know that the car is in autopilot. Now these roads for autopilot, they are really tricky roads. Autopilot in its current software state, the current software that I'm running and all the clips that you see in this video were done on 2019.20.4.2 that you saw earlier that I put down at the bottom there. All these clips were done on that software update and this software update is not designed for these types of roads. Now, it can do these roads, which is really impressive. And I would love to get my hands on some developer software because I think that autopilot is a little bit further along than we'd like to think. I really think that what Tesla's running is super advanced. You can see again, the the blue line on the right hand side bumped out back there, but the autopilot stayed straight. Where in previous updates, I've seen the car kind of swerve to the right to stay in the center of the drivable space. And so the car thinks that the lane is getting a lot wider. Now through the updates I've seen, and you guys have probably seen too, if you follow my channel, this road and along with the other roads that I've tested, the autopilot has been slowly chugging along getting better and better during each update. This particular point right here, me as a driver, I would have slowed down a little bit earlier. I know I talked about this in another video. I still think that me as the driver, I'm like a second or two ahead of where the autopilot system is, where I would have slowed down just a hair bit earlier. Okay, so we're at a red light here, nothing too exciting going on. Let's jump ahead. So the light turns green, I'm still in autopilot, autopilot's engaged. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm making a left-hand turn at the stoplight, I'm gonna put my left-hand turn signal on, and the autopilot's gonna make a left-hand turn, follow this SUV. Okay, of course I'm kidding if you know anything about autopilot currently. It can't make a left-hand turn at an intersection or a right-hand turn at an intersection yet. I will say I've come close I did a couple of videos on turning at an intersection. I did get it to make a right-hand turn in one particular intersection that was more of like a, I wanna call it like a souped up intersection. It's definitely improving. And I think we're just a couple updates away from autopilot actually making that left-hand turn at an intersection. So I also wanna mention any road like this, just for you guys, kind of like a FYI. Autopilot on these smaller roads, non-highway roads, so like local roads, this is a four lane road, but it's not like a highway. There's traffic lights and stuff like that, like there's incoming traffic and intersections. It's limited, the speed is limited in autopilot to five miles over the posted speed limit. So let's say the, auto, the speed limit currently is 35 miles an hour the autopilot is limited to five miles over that speed limit. And I think that's just to ensure that the auto steer, I, I wanna say the auto steer is limited to five miles over. You can set the adaptive cruise control to whatever you'd like. I think that goes up to 90 miles per hour, but the auto steer portion of the autopilot, and that's where you have that blue steering wheel on the two blue lines, what we're doing here is limited to five miles per hour over the posted speed limit on these smaller roads. And again, on like bigger highways, like where there's no traffic lights or anything like that, you can go as fast as you want. I think up to 90 miles per hour on those type of roads. 
So you can speed see the speed limit bumped up here and I have a setting to automatically go five miles an hour over the speed limit. If you live in Northern Virginia, you know why that is because you will get run over and you'll see multiple cars pass me throughout this test here. So you can see I turn on the turn signal and it's not letting me change lanes, which typically it has before, which I find very interesting. So I'm gonna try it again and I put on the left-hand turn signal again and it's waiting, it's waiting, and again, I get the error, which this is uh, the first day after driving with, on the newest update, and I'm really kind of confused as to why it's not allowing me to change lanes. So I try it a third time, and you can see here that right away, the dash lines pop up on my center display, and it transitions over into the left-hand lane. Because I'm only going five miles per hour over, I quickly get past in the left-hand lane by this Honda CRV, which again reiterates my point about only driving five miles per hour over in the Northern Virginia area. So you can see here, I'm passing a lot of slow cars and it's really cool to see the optical system pick up every single one of those cars as I pass them really quickly. So we're in the left-hand lane and keep an eye on the median here. So it's a concrete kind of curved median. So keep an eye here as we pass through this intersection, it is a slight curve, but the autopilot has no issue when it's in the left-hand lane. And I believe that's because the median is clearly defined. If you've seen some of my other videos where I'm testing one particular intersection, the, where I'm in the right-hand lane, not against the median and the left-hand lane, right-hand lane like I am right now, the autopilot struggles a little bit to go through the intersection. And I believe that's because the right-hand lane, when you're staring through the intersection in the right-hand lane, it lines up with the left-hand lane. So autopilot's engaged here. I'm on another four-lane road in the left-hand lane. Speed limit, again, like I was talking about, is limited to five miles per hour over the sp posted speed limit with the auto steer or the autopilot engaged. I really like the transition that it's doing here as far as keeping its distance, slowing down, speeding up. You can see I engage the turn signal and right after the intersection there, it's gonna get behind this truck which slams on its brakes and autopilot does a great job slowing down. I have to admit, this truck had a two inch ball tow hitch hanging off the back and I was really afraid of my front plastic bumper and that beautiful nose of the Model 3 just to have a two inch bumper hole right through it. But autopilot safely came and had plenty of room to stop in front of me. I still had like at least three feet even though during the lane transition autopilot had to slam on the brakes a little bit. So here's another example and we're just in regular autopilot here but navigate on autopilot is turned on. And I want to talk to you real quick about like, so if you can see here, there's a lot of construction going on, right? This is why GPS maps is not going to be a thing. There's always going to be construction and you can never count on uh, high def maps in, form, in terms of autopilot, right? So you can't count on satellite image or even like a HD map of a particular area, because there's always gonna be construction and that kind of stuff going on. That's why I agree with Tesla and what they're doing as far as perfecting the optical system, because that's where you're gonna win. Because if you look at all these cars around me here in the video, all of them are driving with optical systems. They're two eyeballs. Now, they're pretty lame optical systems, only able to see it like, I think we can see at 14 or 15 frames per second whereas the Tesla cameras can see it 250 or 280 frames per second. Feel free to correct me on those numbers down below in the comment section. But it's really, uh, it's, it's obvious to me as a Tesla driver that the optical system over like uh, what some other companies are trying to do is going to win. So take a look, we have a traffic light coming up here and you're gonna watch the autopilot transition into navigate on autopilot with a solid blue line. And that's because 
on this particular stretch, stretch of highway, there's no more traffic lights. That was the last traffic light. So because of how this road is set up, and I don't know if that's built into the map data or that's built into autopilot, probably the map data, but let me know if you know down in the comment section below. But you can see here, navigate on autopilot is engaged. And to be honest, I keep this in Mad Max mode all the time. Yes, Mad Max mode will pass people on the right, which some of you may not like, but I don't, I don't see a huge difference between um, the mode underneath Mad Max, and honestly, I wanna see more lane changes. And sometimes, you know, like you'll see later in this video, the Mad Max mode is a little bit annoying, where it's trying to make a lane change that I don't necessarily agree with, so I have to tap and cancel that lane change. So as you can see here, we're traveling five miles per hour over. Again, you can set that in your, your autopilot settings. So I have it set to where it'll automatically go five miles per hour over the speed limit. And you can see I'm getting passed by everybody on the right and the left hand side. But Navigate on Autopilot is doing a great job staying in the middle of the lane it's able to identify every single vehicle. Really, really impressed. Solid performance with Navigate on Autopilot. I know that was a really kind of slow curve to the right back there on the highway, but just very solid performance. Okay, it's asking me to put my hands on the wheel, so if you guys don't know what that means, I basically have to put pressure on the wheel so Tesla or the Autopilot system knows that my hands are on the wheel and that is strictly for liability. You as the driver or me as the driver is still responsible for this vehicle and if it gets in an accident. So here with that blue rectangle that comes down, autopilot is, I, is notifying me that a lane change is coming up and you get a gray line, you can see in that right hand lane there, a gray line is kind of going forward and I have to have my hands on the wheel and then it's going to make the lane change right over, which is really smooth. When this first came out just a few software updates ago, it was very jerky and would kind of dive into the lane or it would take forever and they've really kind of ironed out the issues with the lane changes and in my opinion, the lane changes are perfect. There is like maybe one or two instances that I've seen on YouTube where there's a lane change issue. But again, like they talked about in the autonomy day where they're just chasing the nines, every instance that I personally have run into has been a perfect lane change, which is really impressive for such a new system. And again, I think that the hive mind system that autopilot is running off of is really gonna pay in the future for Tesla as more and more cars get on the road and it learns just faster and faster as more and more cars get on the road. So here's our exit and you can see Navigate on Autopilot is still engaged and it takes the exit for us. One gripe that I have is Navigate on Autopilot wants to slow me down really slow and I'm afraid of getting rear-ended here because most people are going 55, 60 miles an hour right here until you get up to this exit point. But as a driver, I can manually push down on the accelerator pedal and that's why I'm getting that error down there um, to ensure that the car goes a little bit faster. So here on this curvy stretch, I'm okay with going 35, 40 miles an hour. And you can tell that Navigate on Autopilot is ended and Autopilot is engaged because we have two blue lines, as you can see there. So navigating this back and forth off-ramp is really impressive and super smooth. So let's take a look at an on-ramp. You can see here I'm in Navigate on Autopilot and I'm just really impressed with the turn signal usage how it gets onto the on-ramp. My hands are not on the steering wheel, as you can see, and it is just smooth as butter. But there's so many different on and off ramps, it's really impressive that Autopilot's able to work across a big spectrum. So take a look at this. So Autopilot wants to change me into the left-hand lane, 
here you can see by that gray line but if you look at my navigation in 1.9 miles I'm getting off to the right hand exit this is an instance where navigate on autopilot is maybe too aggressive and I do have it in Mad Max mode but I can simply tap to cancel that lane change but it did kind of want me to get into that left hand lane really badly and I just started recording this after I actually tapped it like five or six times like no I don't want to get in the left hand lane I know that up here in less than two miles I'm getting off to a right exit there's nobody in front of me so there's no reason to get into the left hand lane now with less than a mile and a half to get off of this highway it, I mean it's really silly that it wanted to get me all the way in the left hand lane now you can see that I have an upcoming lane change from navigate on autopilot and that's going to be into the right hand lane it's a good thing I hit that cancel button otherwise I'd be in the left lane now autopilot is definitely improving I did a couple tests on roundabouts and it's able to go through a roundabout which is really impressive and this is just regular autopilot so it's only going to go straight through it's not going to take an exit in the roundabout for you but it still is getting better stronger faster so let's take a look at this again because it's really impressive autopilot is able to navigate straight through a roundabout around this huge thing in the center of the road really impressive i wanted to update you guys don't worry i didn't forget about this one intersection i have still been testing this intersection and will update you guys as of the most current update, I feel like autopilot is more accurate on this intersection, meaning that the autopilot is more likely to pass going through in the right hand lane in this intersection. And I have a lot of test data for you guys to see in, forms of, in terms of video. And I'm excited to share that with you, but I'm gonna wait a couple more updates probably, unless this next update is a really big leap because we're still waiting on some changes that need to come because it's not 100% and I can't get multiple tests in a row. But definitely stay tuned, don't worry, I didn't forget about this test. I wanna give a shout out to James Henderson. He is the very first patron that I had over on Patreon and you guys can actually go over there and support me for as little as a dollar a month and right now until July 5th, you can get the same thing that James got, which is a personal shout out. And when you sign up, you get a lot of access to a lot of other content behind the scenes and a lot of other things that you will not see here on YouTube. So definitely head over to Patreon and check that out. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, share this video with a friend, and I will see you guys in the next one.